Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's uh, Quick File Lunch and Learn webinar. We are talking today about, about the mailroom. Um, and in the mailroom, there there are several things that we can discuss, um, but before we begin, I just want to set some expectations for this webinar. Um, we will not be able to discuss anything or have any questions answered outside of the realm of the, uh, the mailroom. So um, if you have questions pertaining to the mailroom, that's great. Thank you. Uh, keep those coming. My associate Amy will be monitoring those questions and providing you answers just as quickly as possible. Um, also the webinar itself is being recorded, so once we record the webinar, um, we will post it to our website um, and uh, make sure that everybody can uh, view it online at any time. So it will be in our webinar section under recorded webinars. So you'll be able to view that at, at any time. Um, with that, let's go ahead and uh, get the session started. We're only going to run roughly about 50 minutes to an hour. Um, and with that, we're going to go into the mail room. Once we open up the mailroom, you'll notice that you have the ability to print letters or print labels. So let's just kind of give you a lay of the land so that you know what to expect so that when we're, we're talking about the mailroom, you guys can kind of follow along. Up at the very top on the toolbar, we have Help, Main Menu, Print Letters after you've made your selections, Print Unprinted Letters, which we'll talk about later, and Print Unprinted Labels, which we'll talk about later. We have a radio button here that says print letters or print labels. <clears throat> Each screen is different and I'll talk about those separately. Let's go back to print letters. Over here on the left hand side is your search criteria for the letters. Now that being said, what are we searching for? When you're searching for letters in the mailroom uh, to be printed, you want to make sure that you get the clients that, that you're looking for. So that being said, there are all kinds of date fields that you can choose from or date types that we can choose from. For example, the binder date, the effective date, expiration date, cancellation date. You might have a, a specific memo date that you're looking for or an intent to cancel date. Or maybe you're just going to generate a letter to all the clients that are available in QuickFile. Okay? Um, if you select these things, it will ask you for a starting and ending date range. If you select all clients, the dates will disappear and it will choose based on the information that you enter in from that point forward. So these are the date ranges, they are the date types of dates that you can look for. Next we have our client status. You can look for through your database for all client statuses. We can do active client statuses, inactive, or prospects. All right. So we can look for those different types of prospects so we can narrow our search down to a specific type of client. Our policy status, we can look for pending policies. Maybe we have a bunch of quotes that are sitting out there that we want to follow up with those clients. We can do that here in the mailroom. Um, we have our active policy status. You can search by pending, both pending and active. You can do expired or you can do canceled. Okay. So those are your different policy statuses that you can search by. Next you can sort them by uh, sort them alphabetically or by date. So however you want to sort the letters when they come up on your preview screen, that's what you're looking for there. Okay? They'll either be by date or they'll be alphabetically. Next we have our letters to choose from. In quick word, you should have a list of letters, um, and if you've not played with that before, please do so. Go in there and just kind of understand how it works. But as you can see, when I click on this drop-down menu, since I am working in Enterprise, I have a whole list of letter templates. These are my letter templates that I would choose from. Um, if I want to change and narrow down my search instead of looking through all my offices, I can click on this little button right here for the agency and I can just select one office. So for example, if I want to select Homestead and click OK, it will only distribute or show me the letters that are available for Homestead and that narrows down my search by agent, or I'm sorry, by agency. Okay? So as you can see, I have an entire list of letters here. Okay? We also have this where it says use cross-marketing, and I'll discuss that a little bit later on in the webinar. We'll talk about the cross-marketing letter. Over here on our print options, we have the ability to print to the printer only, 
email only if the email address is entered and it will not print anything out on the printer. You can email if the address is entered, otherwise it will print to the printer. And then you can print to printer and email if the email address is present. Now where does the email address have to be present on this? Well, it has to be present on the client's, poly on the client's uh, information page, so on the client screen. Okay. If you choose any one of these options, like for example email, you can email the letter as an attachment. Okay? And you can check that box and it will go as an attachment. What it will do is it will go as a PDF attachment. All right? So this is the basic information that you would search for for a letter. Okay? So now let me do this and I'm going to go ahead and just run a letter on, based on the information captured on this page. So what I'll do is I will click on expiration date and I'm going to run a renewal letter. So I'm going to click on expiration date. I'm going to choose all my clients, all my active clients. Policy statuses I'm going to choose pending and active. Just so you guys can actually I'm going to choose active. I'm going to sort them alphabetically and I'm going to run my renewal letter. So if I scroll down here you can see that I've got a renewal expiration letter that is ready to print. Now, we'll run this for all agencies, and I click OK, and actually I'm going to print to the printer only. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the very top of my toolbar, and you can see I've got everything that I need. Oh, I don't have my search criteria, so I've got to put in my search criteria. Uh, my starting and end ending dates. So 06, 01, 09 through 630, 09, and I'm going to click on print letters. When I click on print letters, you'll notice that I have 11 letters that need to be printed. In just a second, we're going to see a preview of those letters. And you can see that I have my logo attached up here. If not, we will use your default logo. We have the today's date, the client's name, okay, and their policies that's set to renew. Okay? And I have 11 letters. All right? Now, if I wanted to, I could change my search criteria. And as you can see, each letter is changing, and some clients will have two letters if they have two policies expiring in the same date range. Okay? And I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I'm I'm not going to print these letters, so I'm just going to delete them. Let me widen that search. Instead of active clients, let's do all. I click on print letters. I'm going to get far more letters to print. Actually, I won't. Oh, because I'm choosing policy status active. Hang on, guys. We'll close this out. We'll choose all statuses print letters. And again, like I said, I'll have far more letters to print. Okay. Now, in theory, when you guys are running your letters, always make sure that you're looking for policy statuses that are active or issued. Okay. That makes far more sense than trying to look for policy statuses that are inactive or client statuses that are inactive that fall within this state range. It just doesn't make sense because you're not going to get the correct information out of it. So you're really searching for active clients. Okay, and as you can see, I have 63 letters that I needed to print. Okay, if I wanted to email any of these letters, I would have selected email and print, and it would have printed out the e printed out the letters and printed out the email. Okay, or emailed it to my client. Now, in order for the email to be working correctly, you must set up the email options in your utilities. They will use Microsoft Outlook or Outlook Express or uh, Outlook and uh, Microsoft Mail or Windows Mail, I'm sorry, Windows Mail in the Windows Vista version. Okay? So that's what it's going to use and that's what it's going to send out. Okay? So let me go ahead and close this and let's say that I've got clients that uh, we're looking at, you know, all kinds of clients here. Let me narrow my search down. So we'll talk about this for just a second. You can see I got 63 letters, but maybe I want to narrow that down. If I did it all, maybe I just want to do my active Okay, and my policy status active. That narrows my search down to the 11, right? But let's say I want to narrow this down even further. 
how would I narrow this search down to only target a specific group of people? I can go here to this tab that says Filters. If I click on the Filters tab, you can see I have a whole bunch of items here that I can narrow my search down by. So if I wanted to narrow my search by source, or if I wanted to narrow my search by agent, or finance company if I was doing some type of billing, or some type of optional or additional coverage, you know, maybe I want all auto policies that have optional and additional NSD products attached to them. Or maybe I want to just do my new business or my renewals or my rewrites, okay, or non-renewals, okay. Um, maybe I want to search that by zip code, okay. So maybe I have a certain zip code that I'm targeting. I can also select and narrow down my search by just auto policies or by a couple of lines. So if I want to, I can select one here. If I want to multi-select lines of business, I can click on this button right here. Okay. So if I click on that, it'll give me this. And I click and select the ones that I want. And maybe I want homeowners in here. Okay. And I want to exclude everyone else. So as you can see, I have three choices. I click OK got auto, commercial, auto, and homeowners selected. And now if I was to print my letters using the same criteria, it would only print those that have auto, commercial, auto, or homeowners attached to them. So if I click on print letters, okay, I now only have five letters because only five of those clients pertain to my search. Okay? So I can close this out. As you can see, there's my letter. Nice and pretty and ready to go. Okay. Close this. Select no. Now, let's talk about once we get our letters printed. Okay. Once I get my letters printed, okay, I can now go back in and print my labels. So if I select the radio button that says print labels, okay, I would use the same search criteria and I would print my labels. Now just to let you know, we do use Avery 5160 or 8160 standard labels. Okay, So you can purchase those at any office supply store. Those are the labels that we'll print out on. If I click on print labels, what will end up happening is it will bring up those five clients and their labels. So there they are. Okay. Now, Let's say, for example, that instead of having it print out with the last name and then the first name, I can change the label type to first name and then last. So this is how it would look on my label. As you can see from my previous one, it was last name and then first. I can do first name and last, and that makes a little bit more sense. Or I can do insured. Okay? Insured would generally be the client's first name unless you're dealing with a commercial client, in which case it will be the commercial client's uh, business name. Okay. If you want it to be insured plus the contact, like the business owner, then you can select that and it will put ABC Plumbing Attention John Smith. If I need a date to be printed on that label for any reason, I can print a date. I can print the date and the expiration date, Okay, maybe making it time sensitive. Okay. So there are all kinds of things that I can do here. Again, my filters if I filter this out, apply to my labels. So whatever search criteria I have in place for my letters, I keep and put print for my labels. Okay. Now let's go back to printing letters again, and let's talk about our filters a little bit more. Let's say that I want to do um, search by binder. Let's say I want to do birth date. Okay. Now you'll notice that when I did my birth date and, and sorted by that, I can now do all clients in a specific month. So I can do a month range. Okay? So now I, maybe I want all clients that have a birthday in, let's say, September. Okay? Actually, let's just choose May. Okay? And now if I wanted to, then I would go and get my birthday letter. Okay, and I can select all my agent or all my agencies, and I can click on print letters. Okay. 
Now, I have eight people in May that have a birthday. So now when I bring up my letters, here they are, okay? and they'll print just the way we see them here. Okay? If I had an email address attached to that client and I clicked on print and email, I would be able to email it. Now, just to let you know, you can print a single page or you can print all pages. So anytime you're into this screen, you can print this page or print all pages. So it allows you to choose which one you want to print. Okay? And again, um, once you click on that, if I click on print this page, it will give me a memo. All right? And then I can add to that what I want to, a uh, printed letter, uh, you know, birthday.rtf letter printed, and I can add information to that memo. If I don't want a memo attached to that, I can click on no memo, and no memo will be attached to that. However, I would suggest that you always attach some type of memo to the letters that you're printing, maybe to why you're printing that letter, or maybe what reason you have to print that letter. Those are the things that I would add to that. Okay? Um, and again, it's just one of those things where I would consider that kind of a best practice. Uh, that way you would not have to worry about um, going back and saying, yeah, I printed this birthday letter, but I don't remember why, or I, I printed this, uh, this renewal letter, but I can't remember the specifics. Um, you know, there just might be all kinds of reasons that you would put that there. Okay? Maybe you guys have some type of inner office uh, reasoning why. So you might want to put that there. It doesn't matter. It's up to you just depends. It's up to your agency. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this out, and I'm going to close this. You'll notice that every time that I get uh, close out this screen, I get this little message right here that say letters were not printed, print later. If I select no, it will not keep the letters for me to print later. If I select yes, it will save the letters. So I'm going to go ahead and save these letters just so you can see what happens. I click on yes. And you'll notice down here at the very bottom, to print letters or labels in the queue, click Print Unprinted above. That's this or this. Okay? And down here, I have this letters in queue. Okay? And that's eight. So those are those eight letters for my birthday people that I just saved right here. Now, let's say that I wanted to print, um, let's say that I go back to my renewal letters. And I'm going to go by expiration date, okay? And I'm going to choose my active clients, my policy status being active, and I'm going to sort them alphabetically. And I'm going to go back to my renewals. Okay, and I'll click on print my letters. Now when I print these letters, I have 11 of them, okay? What's going to end up happening is it's going to bring up that preview. Just so you can see, there's the same people. I'm going to close this out. And if I select no, it will delete the letters. If I select yes, it will save them. So I'm going to select yes. And now you'll notice that instead of eight letters, I now have 19 letters. If I click on print unprinted letters, what will end up happening is it will bring back up not only my letters from before, but if I go to letter number 12 down here, okay, it will show me all my birthday letters as well as all my letters that I needed to print. So now when I'm ready to, I can print all of these pages. So I can come in here and do multiple letter queries at any time, save them for later, and print them later. Okay? You'll also notice if you're in the mailroom along with me, and I'm going to go ahead and clear my queue, you'll also notice that when I said no, everything goes away. You may also notice that you already have some letters in queue. If you do, that could be the result of an unprinted receipt, an unprinted letter from the client screen, or something of that nature that would be there uh, from a various different parts of the program. So it would generally come from the client screen. So if I see letters in queue or labels in queue, that could come from the client screen. So just so you know, anything that you put in here will stay here. I've seen this get up to you know 150 letters or 250 letters. Okay, you'll want to clear these out if you're trying to, you know, if you're going to start maximizing this particular feature. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the filters again. Okay, and the filters, I have some other options over here on my filters. I can exclude endorsements. So if I don't want to include policies that have endorsements, I can click on exclude, and it will only print letters that people, uh, for people so that I don't include two endorsements. I can also exclude direct bill policies, okay, or maybe a finance payment due. Okay. The other nice feature that we have, the other two nice features that we have here, are one label letter per client per expiration date. So if I'm choosing an expiring policy, I can choose just to print out one letter or label per client per policy or per, per expiration date. I can also choose one label or letter per client. Okay. What that means to me is if I have just if I have a client that has multiple policies and they're all expiring within the same date range, what will end up happening is I will then just generate one label or letter for that client. Okay? I can also, again, like I said, um, narrow my search down. So if I wanted to, again, we'll go back through this just so that everybody is really clear about this. I can narrow it down by source. So if I wanted to say that this was a referral, okay, or if I wanted to say that a referral and the agent was attached to that, when I click on print letters, it may tell me that there are no letters to print, which is exactly what I expected it to do. Okay, because the criteria doesn't that I have for those clients that it were normally printing are not matching now. If I click on my filters again, I can then just select all, and I can select all agents. Okay. So we're pretty clear on that as far as as far as that's concerned. Now let me make sure um, that we can run a let's say just a general thank you letter. So I'm going to search by binder date. Okay, and I'm going to search all policies that are act pending and active and I'm going to search uh, run my thank you letter okay and I'm just going to go by a little larger date range and I'm going to print my letters Okay, and this would be my thank you letter. Okay, my thank you letter prints out just exactly the way I designed it. Okay, and there it is. Okay, and remember, if you're going to design a letter, design the letter template in QuickWord and you'll be able to grab that information and, and print it out here. Okay. So there they are. There's all my letters. Okay. Close this out. Again, I want to clear out my letter queue. Okay. And now we'll talk about cross-marketing. Now, one of the ways that you guys can really benefit from the mailroom, not only for just thank you letters, bulk thank you letters, bulk birthday letters, bulk uh, emails, and things like that. One of the big ways that you can benefit from the, uh, from the mail room is by using cross-marketing. So here I have my print letters selected. I have my binder date selected. Okay, I've got my sort, how I'm going to sort them. If I check this little box that says use cross-marketing, I'm presented with this screen. Okay, now what I'm looking for I'm looking for clients that have a policy with this particular line of business, okay, and through all of my insurance companies. Now, I could narrow my insurance companies down here. So what it basically says here is show customers with a policy through th these companies, okay, or all companies with this line of business, okay. So let's just select auto to make it simple. Now, 
if I'm cross marketing, I can cross market at the time of sale or I can cross market at the time of renewal. By default, we set it up at the time of renewal, so we would go by expiration date. So if I clicked on the drop down menu, you would see two choices expiration and effective. Okay? So it's up to you how you decide to cross market, because you can cross market at the time of sale or at the time of renewal. Okay? If I want to, I can include all active policies for a client with the given criteria. I can search by a specific agency or I can run my entire agency chain. I have over here on the left where it says show one entry per client. And that's actually pretty beneficial to us because I can just see one, I just would generate one letter instead of two. Okay. Um, over here on the right hand side of the screen, it tells me I have, uh, I'm looking for clients that have this. And without a policy through these companies, through all companies, with this line of business. So let's say I want to look for my homeowners. Okay. Now, again, I'm looking by expiration date or I can search by effective date. doesn't matter how I do this. It just depends on how you want to cross market. I'm going to choose effective date. And I'm going to choose... last month. Okay. And when I choose that, I simply click OK. When I click OK, you'll notice that all my dates and things like that have disappeared. So they're all hidden. So the only two choices that I have to make are how I want them sorted and which letter I'm going to choose. Okay. And again, we have a letter template already built into QuickFile called Cross Marketing which I just zoomed right past. Here it is, crossmarketing.rtf. Okay. Once I've selected that letter, I can go up here and click on Print Letters. When I click on Print Letters, it'll tell me how many letters I've got to print. And you'll see that I have six. And here are my clients. Okay. So there they are. If I select Next, Okay. You'll notice that I have two letters for this client. Okay. Same thing would apply for any multiple letters. Okay. So there's my six letters for last month. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out, and I'm going to go back into my configuration. So I would click on this button, click on Change Configuration, and I would show only one entry per client. When I click OK, that changes my search criteria. I click on Print Letters, okay, and now instead of having six, I have five. So now Stanley and Patricia would only get one letter. Okay, same thing with all the rest of my clients. So we're in a case where I have multiple clients attached to a meeting the search criteria. I can narrow that down. Again, and this is the standard letter that we have in QuickFile. You can design, again, your own using QuickWord. Now, let's say that I have multiple selections that I want to use. Okay? So, if I have multiple selections, let's say I want to look for clients that have auto but not business auto or maybe um, homeowners, business auto, homeowners, and let's go with flood. Okay. So now we've got more over here. If I click on one or all, okay, that changes my criteria. So when I start multi-selecting, I can do with one of these lines of business, okay, or all. So however they meet this criteria. When I click OK and print my letters, it will ask me, how would you like to show as the, what would you like to show as the excluded line of business? What this allows me to do is it allows me to modify that. So in the case of where um, I might have, I might just want to say homeowners, I can put that right here and say homeowners, okay, or flood insurance or business auto. Okay. So I
I can choose that. And I'm just going to choose, for argument's sake, we're just going to choose homeowners. I click OK. I print my letters. Again, matching the same criteria. I've got the five. Okay. And it would say homeowners. Now let's go back and modify that a little bit so that we can see what would happen if I had left it the way it was. Okay, so we'll select, unselect. I click OK. And it left it. So it remembered my criteria. Let me uncheck this box. We'll recheck it. We'll run this again one more time. I select auto, multi select auto. Whoops. Let's select business auto. Let's select flood again. And also we'll select homeowners. We'll do last month. I'll show one entry per client. I'll search by effective date. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to leave this just exactly the way it is. Okay. So when I click OK and I print my letters, now you can see that everything that I selected right here shows up. Okay, so just the way I had it on that screen shows exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. All right. Again, if you want to, you can change your configuration and go back through this again. Okay, if you want to narrow this by uh, um, company, and maybe you wanted to select, I don't know, ARA Casualty, okay, click OK, click OK again, and print your letters. I may not have any letters to print, okay? But you can narrow that, that search down. So, for example, if you're flipping a book of business, all right, that's where that would become very handy for you to narrow that down and say, okay, here's what I want. I want all my clients that have auto policies. Uh, let's say I'm flipping them from travelers to progressive, okay, and I want to know all my clients that have a traveler's auto policy, um, and I want to find those, and I want to cross-market them to, you know, a – homeowners or something like that with another company. So I'm looking for something specific. Okay? So that's what I would want that's what I could do. I could select that and make sure that I find those people that match that criteria. Okay. All right. Once I've got my letters printed, again we can go back and we can print our labels. We don't need to do anything because it's using the cross marketing default, so there's nothing to change. I would click on print labels. Okay? And there's my labels and there they would print exactly the way I've asked it to, asked it to do. Okay? All right. What we're going to do real quick is I'm just going to see if there's any questions that we have that I can answer. No. Okay. All right. All right, so what else have we got on there? I think we've pretty much covered the mailroom. I think we've pretty much covered everything that we're looking for as far as that's concerned. Um, let me just generate one that I, I want to make sure that you guys understand about the email because I think I've had some questions on this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use my cross-marketing here. I'm going to go by binder date. I'm going to select active, um, pending and active, and I'm going to go by one date here. Because I want everybody to see what happens when we do an email. And 
and I'm just going to select my thank you letter here. Make sure I got my right date range here. Just a second here, guys. Print to printer, email. I will do this with the cross marketing. I remember why. Because I want you guys to see all. Homeowners. I ran this earlier so that I could show it to you guys just specifically for this webinar. I'm going to go by effective date. Okay, and I got my email address entered here. Click on print letters. Should come up with one. Okay, there it is. When I click on print this page, because there's an email address entered, okay, here's my email or here's my memo. When I click OK, it's going to give me an, a message right here that says one email was sent. This is extremely important that you understand that that's how many letters that you sent or printed that are going to be here. Okay. When I click OK, this letter, this particular letter, isn't going to disappear off of my screen. It's not going to update. Okay. So if I click on Print this page again, okay, and I click OK, it's going to tell me again one email was sent. If you go to print the other pages or print all pages and there were multiple people here, what would end up happening is the other pages where the email was already sent um, would not print out on your printer. Okay, so it does work and here's my email. Okay, and once you, once you, and you can also verify that those emails were sent um, in your Outlook sent items folder. So if you look in your Outlook sent items folder, you'll know that that has been uh, correctly sent. Very important stuff there. All right. Now, just to verify that the letter was sent, I'll show you where it went to. We'll go to our client right here. And as you can see, at 1242, I sent an email. At 1243, I sent an email. So it is verified that it is here in the client record. So just so you guys know, they, that's how it's coming through, and that's how the email is sent. Okay. Again, it will search your letters. It will find everybody that has an email. Once you have the email sent, the rest of the letters will print. Okay. And those clients should be excluded. Now let's just try this for a couple of clients so that we can see where I would have that same criteria happen. And we'll select without homeowners. I'll do last month. I'll go by effective date. Select my cross marketing letter. I'm going to print my letters. Whoops.
always make sure you select your email. Otherwise, print to printer. Click on print letters. Notice that I have two for Stanley and Patricia. When I click on print all pages, I'm going to give, me my, give myself a memo. Click OK. It'll tell me, ask me for my printer. Okay. And it tells me that three letters have been emailed and removed from the queue, which means I have three letters that are going to print. Okay. And once they've been removed, okay, so I will only get three printing, uh, three printer, printed letters. Okay. Once I'm done, I click OK, and again I can go back and see who printed, you know, who had email addresses and stuff like that that I sent out to. So when I look at my letters and I go through them, I should know immediately whose letters printed and whose letters didn't print. Okay. So we have three letters here, and I can look and again, like I said, and see who didn't print. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we ran through that rather quickly, a little bit more, uh, a little bit faster than what I expected. Um, again, I'm just going to check and see if there's any questions that I can go through that we didn't go through before. Go through the queue again. Okay. And let's go ahead and talk about the letter queue again one more time. Um, with the letter queue, and I'll show this and demonstrate it again, let's just say that we're going to do our cross-marketing letter. We'll print it. When I click No, see I've got my letter here. If I click on Close at this point, I'm going to get this message. and It will say letters were not printed, print later. If I select Yes, it will put them in a letter queue. And as you can see, I've got six letters in my queue. Okay. Now we will do a different letter. We'll go by Effective Date. I'll do a thank you letter. I'll put in a date range. And click on print letters. Filter set. We'll go through a different. Hang on just a second. We'll get that again. Let's go by expiration date. Change my search criteria here for just a second. Go. I'm going to click on print letters. Ooh, that's a lot of letters to print. So 
don't know why I used such a large date range. Okay, we'll stop this. Okay, because I stopped that in the middle, you can see I have 114 letters in my queue. Okay, if I wanted to go back and restart those, I could. But the letters in queue are sitting out there to be printed. So if I click on print letters or print unprinted letters, there they are. It'll take just a minute. It'll take a little bit less time to, to queue up 114 letters as opposed to 400. And once we, again, your letters in queue are letters that need to be printed later. So you can come in at the end of the night, like let's say during the course of the day, you've come into the mailroom a couple of times to do three or four different types of letters. And instead of printing them all right now, okay, you can print them later on. And once you print those out, you can print them all out in a batch. Okay, and if I click on this little arrow here, it'll take me to the very last letter, which should be 114. Okay, and there we are. So this is, these are the policies, or this is the letters that I have to print. When I click on Print All Pages, it will print everything out and email to those people that need to be emailed to. I'm going to close this, and I'm going to select No. And when I do that, it's going to give me my letters in queue. Okay, and it's going to clear it out. So if I want to delete that queue, I can by simply either printing them out or by deleting them when I click on No again. Okay? The labels in queue work exactly the same way. Effective date. Okay, and so now I'm going to get my letters, or my labels. See that I have 153 labels. Okay, it'll bring that up. Once it brings up those labels, if I decide to close out the labels and lock them down or shut shut down the labels before printing them, it will put them in the queue to be printed later. So here's all my letters or my labels. If I close this and I select yes to print them later, it'll put them in the queue. When I click on print unprinted labels, it'll bring them back up very quickly for me to load and print. Okay, so I can close that out. If I say no, it will delete all my labels in my queue. Okay? And again, just a reminder, any queue labels are going to be in the um, are, could come from anywhere. It could come from here, it could come from the client screen. Um, it could come from the policy screen while printing a letter. It could come from the letter section while printing a letter. It could be a receipt that you didn't print. So any of those things can be you know, uh, printed there. Not to mention, just so you know, any letters that you print to the client will automatically be saved to that client. So those emails and those letters that I printed out to that client, when I go back to my main menu and I go to my, my letters section here, Okay, you can see all the letters that I've printed to this client. Okay, and it tells me the date and the time that I printed them. So they're all stored automatically to that client. Doesn't matter what I did. Okay. All right. So that pretty much concludes our webinar for today. Um, I want to thank each and every one of you for attending. Um, we'll wrap everything up. Want to make sure that we didn't have any outstanding questions that need to be answered or d demonstrated again. Just a reminder, we are going to we are recording this, so when we go back, uh, we, we will have this posted to our website within the next couple of days, and you will be able to view it. Um, simply go to QQ Online for uh, and select web uh, select training, and then select webinars, and you'll see it uh, down at the bottom of the page. It'll show you the webinars that we have uh, have displayed there. So. Uh, again, I want to thank each and every one of you for attending. The webinar has been recorded. Uh, Amy is going to continue to answer any questions that you might have for the next uh, five to ten minutes. Um, once she's answered all the questions, we'll end the webinar. Um, or if she doesn't get to all of them, we will actually go ahead and get to your questions and send you an email. 
All right, again, appreciate that. Everybody have a great day. We're going to go ahead and get off the phone. And we'll leave the webinar open for questions, um, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.